Hi guys, let's talk about GDB. GDB is the debugger for Linux. It's super powerful, but its user friendliness or lack thereof can make you throw your PC out of the window. But what's important to understand about GDB is that it's just not simply a tool. It's a powerful debugging framework for you to build upon. In this video, I'm going to walk you through GDB setup for reverse engineering and show you all the necessary commands and shortcuts for your debugging workflow. Let's get started, you guys. To install GDB, just type sudo apt install GDB and also we're gonna need a GCC compiler to compile our test examples, so I suggest you install uh, build essential spec and to install pida just follow installation instructions from pida repository i'll be using this simple program as our debugging target this code creates local variable x on the stack then prints out its value after that it adds 5 to x and reads the value again. Pretty simple, just what we need for our debugging example. And right now I need to uh, compile our debugging example with uh, GCC with a simple command. Okay, as we see, our example is compiled. Let me run it. Okay, so just uh, what we expect. To open a file in GDB, type GDB and your file name in the console. GDB will open and load your file. Notice that the code execution hasn't started yet. That's because there is a separate command to start the execution. It's called run or R for short. And if we start it, our program successfully completes execution. That's because we haven't set any breakpoints yet. We can set a breakpoint using symbol name, for example, break main, or you can do that using address. In my case, it will be break asterisk and address of main function. You can print a list of all your breakpoints with info breakpoints command and delete them with command delete and your breakpoint number. As you can see, breakpoint number one just got deleted. Now, if I issue run command, the execution conveniently stops at the beginning of the main function. And just to save us some time, we can use command start, which comes from PIDA instead of doing all this. This command will do all this work just for us. Of course, as with any other debugger, we can use single stepping with command step or step i. And if you like to do a single stepping a lot, know that pressing return on an empty line will make GDB execute the previous command you entered once more. Also, you can use command next to single step without entering function calls. To step through several instructions at once, you can use command next and number of instructions. If you want to continue execution to a certain point in a program, for example, to exit a loop, you can use command x until and your address. So let's talk about modifying registers. To do this, let me restart the execution of our program. Uh, let me step through uh, some lines of code until uh, we reach the line main plus 41, where our value x is incremented. For example, if I want to skip incrementing x, I can change the value of RAP register with following construction set dollar sign register name, in my case OIP, and then value. And I want uh, this address 
I hit enter and I can output uh, our context once again and we see that the next line to be executed is uh, line main plus 45. As you might have noticed, you can treat registers like variables in GDB. So I can assign RIP value of ArrayX with command set RIP equals ArrayX. Now I can issue context command to make sure PIDA reprint its beautiful context window and we'll see that RIP points to some nonsense. And if I want to start execution from the start of main function, I can just write set RIP equals main. By the way, with PIDA you have a faster way to skip instruction without executing them with command skip i. Modifying memory is similar to modifying registers in the sense that any memory location can be a variable in GDB. So in my example I want to change the contents of format string x equals percent %d. This string is located at this address in my binary. I can use this address as a variable and type in the same command as with the registers set my address equals a a a a percent d but in this case we'll see an error message that's because you should always provide a variable type when modifying memory in gdb so let me correct my command to this As you can see, our new command has executed successfully. So let me continue the execution of the program to see our new format string. And as expected, we can see our new command string here. And now let's talk about examining the memory. You can use command x to examine the memory. For example, if I want to print 28 byte words from the snack pointer, I use command x slash 20xg door signed rsp. 20 this command means the number of the words, x is for hexadecimal format, and g means giant for 8 byte words. By changing second x to i, you can print memory as instructions. The full list of supported modifiers you can find in the description. Also, PIDA provides you with convenient hex dump command, which you can use, well, to display hex dump. This command means print 10 hex dump lines from stack pointer. So today we've seen a glimpse of GDB functionality. To sum up, I want you to take home three things. Number one, use PIDA or a different GDB based plugin that suits your needs. Number two, use break and delete commands to control breakpoints. And number three, use X command to print out memory contents. If you have any further questions on GDB, please leave a comment below. Like this video if you want more content like this. And as always, happy hacking you guys!